Shots fired near a supermarket in Brooklyn. More sounds of gunfire captured by another security camera on another New York City street. There are the sounds Sergeant Jeff Heilig and Officer Michael Romanello hear too often. Our main goal every single day is to make a gun arrest. Absolutely, that's our number one priority every day. Both Heilig and Romanello are part of an elite group of officers assigned to the New York City Police Department's anti-crime team. There are about 50 of them who work throughout the city in plain clothes and patrol in unmarked cars. Their main task, get illegal guns off the streets. Tall order though, right? I mean, it's not... It's, it's not easy, but you know, you have to be persistent and you have to be willing to work hard. This is the first time the anti-crime team has allowed news cameras along for a ride. We're in the South Bronx, an area police characterize as high crime, one that is also economically depressed. That economic depression breeds crime. It brings drugs, drug bring, drugs bring guns, guns bring violence. How does that make your job more challenging? Every night, looking for, looking for a criminal who's carrying a gun, they know the consequences of carrying that firearm. So they'll do whatever is in their power to get away, whether it's to flee on foot, to flee in a car, uh, to shoot it out with the police. We do encounter a lot of dangerous situations, and at the start of your, your day, you don't know what you're going to encounter that night. What are you seeing when you recover these illegal guns on the streets? Whatever they can get their hands on. Uh, we've recovered from uh, two-shot Derringers to uh, all different types of revolvers, semi-automatic firearms uh, held together by duct tape. Held together by duct tape. Yes, uh, uh, shotguns that have been cut down to about a foot. Um, anything that will fire a bullet. My first gun arrest, the gun looked like it was pulled off the Titanic. It was so old and rusted. Whatever type of gun is confiscated, it ends up here at the forensics lab in Queens. Any idea how many guns sort of come through this, that's this lab on a, what, on a daily, weekly basis? Thousands come in each year okay. for examination. According to the NYPD, last year, some 9,000 guns ended up in the lab, a little more than 3,200 of those from gun arrests. Hundreds stored in a room aptly called the library. Racks of weapons, all makes and models kept for reference, such as a World War II Japanese pistol. And you can see it kind of has that antique look to it. Or the most current popular model on the streets. It is a high point uh, nine millimeter that is commonly seen. This one. Any idea At what? this time, I couldn't say. Each gun goes through a multi-step process to determine whether it was used in more than one crime. This would be step one with the examination. Inspector Emmanuel Katranakis walked us through it, from the gun's basic examination to the tank room. Why do we call it the tank room? Because there's a large tank that's filled with water. Oh, I see that here. And the purpose of, of this tank is so that we could discharge a weapon and acquire the bullet. And where does the bullet end up? The bullet will travel through the water a certain distance and eventually drop to the bottom of the tank. Detective Nusser is firing into the bullet recovery of the tank. Once a bullet is recovered, it goes under the microscope, then tested for fingerprints. If there was any fingerprints that were uh, found, they would fluoresce under this UV light. In all, a lengthy process, but one that starts here on the streets every night with a special team tasked with getting guns off the streets. It's a narrow dichotomy. Uh, we want to go out there, we want to do a good job and make gun arrests, but we also want to go home safe and in one piece. It's, uh, it's not easy to balance those two things.